Welcome to the 2024 Facebook and Instagram paid ads crash course. In this video, I'm going to give you an entire crash course from A to Z. We're going to follow around nine different points that you can see here on this doc and take you from hearing about Facebook ads, knowing a little bit about it to really being able to find success inside of Facebook paid ads. Specifically, a lot of these like ideas, concepts can be carried over to Google, YouTube ads, etc but I'm really gonna be working inside of the Facebook Ads Manager today. And so this video is for anyone that maybe you know a lot about Facebook ads and you wanna brush up on kind of some of the basics and fundamentals, this is great. If you've never ran Facebook ads before, this is also gonna be a really good video to kind of get those fundamentals grounded for you. Um, so you can start on a really good foot, you know what you're doing, and the important stuff that really matters, the foundation is rock solid. So let's get right into it. Um, I just finished kind of like generally scripting this video out today or not scripting it, or at least giving like some structure today. So if I feel like later down the road, I, I may make a part two to this if needed. And if you guys feel like anything's missing, there's tons of other videos on my channel. If you want more resources, or if you want to kind of brush up on some of the other intricacies inside of Facebook, but let's just get into this. I'm going to go down the list, talk about some sh things, uh, share some things. And then I'm also going to make sure to actually show you inside of the ads manager what's working, what's not working, and all that kind of good stuff. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so the first things first on our list here is your offer. Now this is kind of a preliminary step that I wanna make sure that everyone that is running ads is really, really clear on what your offer is, who it's for, who's the best client avatar for it. Like just really focus 110% for a minute on your offer. Before you even touch the ads manager, you should really have this dialed in. Um, I like to follow like audience research documents kind of like this. So like, hey, does my product or service like satisfy a need or desire that the market has? Is this a total package solution? Does it mitigate risk, right? There's stuff like this, right? Are there already products out there that are proven? And then you can look at, okay, well, who are some competitors? Who are some influencers in the same space that you're marketing the product in? Are there any books or publications or softwares? And then develop the avatar. Like who's the perfect avatar for this thing? Is it moms between the age of 50 to 60? Is it women between 30 and 40? Is it men between 20 to 40? What is that? What does that look like? This kind of stuff, although it has nothing really to do with like the technicalities inside of the ads manager, it's extremely important to be really clear on what your offer is, what are the unique mechanisms of your offer, and who is the perfect ideal avatar for your offer. So just kind of jot this down because you guys can totally screen clip this, and I'll leave a link to this doc below in the description, as well as some of the other resources as well that I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but who's your ideal avatar? What's your unique mechanism? And all the unique mechanism means is what makes your product different to someone else. If you're selling phones, what's the thing that makes your phone different to everyone else's, right? It could be something as small as the camera being a, a lot better, the software being better. It could be even something referencing literally just a unique mechanism. Like we did a lot of things with a lot of our partners where we would say, hey, <clears throat> this is an ancient Greek um, philosophy that's been applied to this kind of meditation, right? Whatever it is, right? Unique mechanism. Um, so your ideal avatar, unique mechanism, and then you also need to make sure, you need to make sure that you take time to kind of understand what these are and everything that I was mentioning for your offer, right? So that's kind of the first thing. Now let's get into the ads manager, actually getting familiar with it and what everything means. Um, what I'm going to drop, once again, below in the description is this cheat sheet. Um, there's a lot of different stuff in here, kind of like overview of the ad platform. But the first thing that you're really going to hear me say a lot is the KPIs. Cause that's really like the biggest thing that you're going to be looking at inside of the ads manager are these KPIs and KPIs just stands for key performance indicator. And you're going to hear me say that a lot. There's a lot of KPIs that are really specific that we always look at those. And there are some that we only look at sometimes. So let's go ahead. Let's jump into the ads manager real quick and I can show you kind of what everything should look like and what everything really means. So let's assume you've set up your ads manager, you've got everything ready to go. That's fairly straightforward by just going to business.facebook.com. You can set up your ads manager really easily. Now you're inside the ads manager. What is all of this stuff, right? Mine's got a ton of different campaigns in here. Yours would have none. 
Um, but let me just kind of give you a tour around of everything. So you've got the create button up here. This is where you can actually create your ad. And I'll do a walkthrough of like step-by-step -step actually making an ad here in a minute. Um, but that's to actually get things started. Um, going over here to the right-hand side, all the way over here, are where you're gonna actually access and filter those KPIs as well. So you can choose to just do general performance. It'll change all the columns. You can choose to track performance and clicks and it shows you everything. Engagement, video engagement, so on and so forth. You can even go ahead and discover other column presets, right? <clears throat> you can even customize columns and create your own preset. I'd recommend before you kind of even get your hands dirty and start making ads, this is actually the first thing that I would recommend doing. Um, and here's how I'd recommend to go about it and actually building your custom metrics. So once again, you're gonna click up here. This is the first thing you should do inside your ads manager. It's like just setting it up for the first time. And you're gonna go to customize columns and you'll see this right here. Now, what you're gonna do is uncheck everything right here on the right hand side and that should be good to go. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for results, reach, impressions and frequency, delivery, total spent, clicks, cost per click, CTR, um, CPM, and then from here, we're gonna do link click-through rate. So right here, unique link click-through rate. We're also gonna to wanna to put in um, our unique outbound click-through rate. And let me make sure I got all the ones that I want us to use. And last but not least, cost per link click. If I miss anything, I'll make sure to let you guys know, but this is basically what you wanna be tracking here is results, reach, impressions, frequency, delivery, amount spent, clicks, CPC, CTR, CPM, CTR link, unique CTR link, unique outbound CTR, and cost per link click. I'll explain what all of these actually mean, but for now, just set everything up like this. And if I miss one as I'm going through this, um, I can let you guys know and it's easy to add it in here. Um, actually, yeah, that, that's, that's what we'll do for now. That's good. Then you can go ahead and click save as a column preset and you can just say KPIs. Or you can just do primary KPIs and then hit apply. Then whenever you come into ads manager, you can filter to your primary KPIs and all of the stuff that you actually need to be seeing will pop up right here. Because previously, if you were like a performance and clicks, for example, which I like to use quickly, I'm on a really wide screen so I can see all of it. But if you're like on a laptop, <clears throat> you have to tend to have to scroll back and forth, which can be annoying if you're dealing with a lot of accounts or a lot of spend. You wanna make it as easy as possible to make decisions. It's actually the first thing to do there. Now, you'll kind of see how this is laid out. You'll have three tabs up here, campaigns, ad sets, and ads. To give a broad overview of what each of these mean and how these work, uh, campaigns is just the overall structure, how you're setting things up and the objective. So if you wanna get leads, you'll set up a campaign with leads. That's kind of where you're determining this first step right here, determine a campaign objective. That campaign objective, depending on which one you pick, will trickle down into the ad sets and the ad level. Um, but generally speaking, the campaign is what objective are you picking? What's the setup look like generally, right? Ad sets, generally speaking here, is you're gonna be choosing things like your budget, how much are you spending per day? You're gonna be choosing the audience, so like demographics, interests, things like that. This is where you could say, hey, I wanna target people that are uh, men, 30 to 60, that are interested in Grant Cardone, right? This is where you can plug that in. Um, you'll also be able to customize placements here. So things like, I only want to target on Facebook feed, that's it. Or I only want to target on Instagram story. That's where we'll be able to do that here. And then at the ad level, this is your actual ad. This is like the picture, the video, the text, the caption underneath the ad, the headline. And if you're sending them to a URL, this is where you'll be able to put that URL in. 
So that's kind of the general setup of these three tabs up here and what they mean. Whenever you're analyzing something in the ad account, I highly recommend you, let's say we're looking at this campaign, to click the campaign and then go to the ad set level. Because you'll see when we start to set stuff up later down the road and some more of the advanced videos, <clears throat> we'll have a handful of ad sets per one campaign. And let me actually try to find an example here real quick. So I can at least... So like here, for example, right? There's one campaign, but there's two ad sets within that campaign. So if we were just like, oh, let's just look at ad sets. Like I have no idea which ad set here is inside of what campaign. And that can make it really confusing, right? So hope that makes sense. Next step is let's say we're actually going to create the ad. That's where you're gonna do that here. Now, once again, I'll actually pause here because I'm gonna come back to this and actually make the ad in a minute from start to finish. Um, but this right here gives you a good overview, kind of lay of the land of what's going on. Um, the last thing that I'm, um, a few other things that I want to make sure I don't forget up in the top, right? Is where you're going to adjust the date range. So you can filter it to today, yesterday, the past seven days. Um, you can even do maximum and just say for the lifetime of the ad account. And then you can even flip through and just do October, for example, and see what happened, right? What's really cool, and a lot of people actually don't do this, you can actually compare dates. So you could select October, hit compare, and you can say October, I wanna compare to November. So you literally can compare October versus November, which is really, really cool. Um, this may not be a great example because it's not showing me, because I, I didn't really spend much, this account didn't really have much, but you can see right here, cool in October, and you can see like the changes, the percentage, really cool. It's a feature that not a lot of people use, and <clears throat> I think you should. I think it's a really good feature to use. Um, there's some other small things here, um, as far as like on the left-hand side here. I won't really dive into that stuff too much, at least right now. But that's really all you need to know um, as far as like kicking off on the ads manager. So. Um, with that out of the way, let's go ahead. We're good with that. Um, let's talk about a few of like the most important things with ads and a few other preliminary things before I actually show you how to launch an ad step by step. Um, and then from there, what we're going to go over is like analyzing the ads. So like, okay, you launched your ad, it's done its thing. What the heck do you do now? Um, then we'll talk about scaling and then any final thoughts. So, um, next thing, the most important thing in paid ads. So, Inside of paid advertising, especially when you're starting off, there's one thing that you really need to understand super quickly, and I wish I learned this a lot faster, is <clears throat> if something isn't working or if something is working, you want to determine very quickly, is it because of the media buying that you're doing or the marketing? And just to kind of explain that briefly, the media buying is things like, how have you set up the budgets? How have you optimized your audience? How have you set up bid capping? Have you set up a CBO or a lifetime budget, right? And even if you don't know what those means, th those things mean, the media buying is just the stuff you're doing in the ad account, right? Is that the problem or is that the thing that's bringing the success or is it the marketing? And the marketing is the things like, okay, <clears throat> is what your ad saying align with the place that they're going to? So if your ad says one thing, they click, they go to a landing page, it says something totally different. Does that line up? Is there alignment there? Does the image actually grab people's attention? Does the copy, does the caption inside of the ad actually get people to click? Because at the end of the day, the ad's most important job is to get the click, is to get people interested, right? So th that's always how I kind of look at the lens. That's the lens that I look through before I start to analyze ads. It's like, okay, I wanna improve this thing, obviously. Is it a media buying problem or a marketing problem? And 70, 80% of the time, it's a marketing problem, not a media buying problem. So always tend to look at that. Now, when you get to accounts and a lot higher spend, where you're spending like two, three, four, five grand a day, things usually get hairy on Facebook when you start to spend around two to $3,000 a day. Um, outside of that, anything less than that, it's pretty simple. You just gotta make sure your marketing's dialed in. And that brings me to the most important thing in paid ads. It comes down to creating as much content as you can and then testing it and doing it over and over and over and over again. You will beat every single competitor 
inside of Facebook ads as long as you create and test as much content as you possibly can. So if you're gonna be testing image creatives for your offer, say you're not doing any video for whatever reason, you should make as much creative as you possibly can and copy every week and test it. Now, I'm sure there's a couple questions popping up. Oh, well, how many creatives should I be making? How many pieces of copy should I be making, right? Um, what's the budget that I should spend to these things? And I'll explain this as we kind of get into launching the ad as well, but I wanna show you something inside the ads manager so you actually know, like what do you actually need to make before you actually launch your ad? And this may seem like really simple, but I just wanna make it really clear for you guys. Um, so let's go into the ad level here real quick. <clears throat> and I'll show you what you need to make. So for example, this is an ad we ran a while ago and at the core, the content that you need to be making a lot of every week, every month um, is really three things. You need to make a creative. So whether that's a picture or a video, it can be a meme, it can be a fancy graphic you make in Canva, it could be an AI image, be whatever you want. Um, the creative itself, and I, when I say creative, I'm talking about the literal picture or video. The copy, which is the primary text, and that usually shows up as like the caption on Instagram or the caption on Facebook right here. So you can see like on Facebook, it pops up here. Instagram is the caption below it. And then the headline. On Facebook, you can see the headline pops up right here. Instagram, sometimes it doesn't pop up, uh, just depending on like where you're at. Like you can see... Instagram Explore doesn't pop up. I think on Instagram Stories, sometimes it'll pop up. Um, but that headline, those are the three things that you really need to be making a lot of every single week, every single month. Once again, probably come back to the question, well, how much stuff should I actually make? This video is more for beginners, people starting off on Facebook ads. And what I would really recommend to kind of get your feet wet, because I love the idea of backlogging I would rather you make a ton of creative and only use a handful of it so you're always ready for something. That's the best way to approach Facebook ads. So I'd recommend you just get in a cadence, pick a number, but I probably wouldn't do more than 10 creatives each week, <clears throat> um, five pieces of copy, and probably three headlines, right? If you're just starting and your budget is around, once again, anything less than like $1,000 a day. I think you can get away with each week, no more than 10 creatives, five pieces of copy, or three headlines, right? And three headlines. Don't feel like you need to make more than this. If you want to, it's not gonna hurt. If you make eight or seven, that's, that's fine too. I definitely wouldn't go under like five creatives, two pieces of copy, <clears throat> and one headline because you wanna give yourself some things to test. And each week, even if you don't launch that ad that week, get into a cadence of making five to, making these things. The second I started doing this for a lot of my clients and for myself, the ad performance went through the roof. And it's as simple as that. It's just making the content every week. Even if it sucks, even if you're not posting it, get in the cadence, it's the best thing you can do. Now, as far as budget goes, I'll show you some tricks later down the road and there's some other videos I have on my channel already showing if you have 10 creatives and you don't have a lot of budget, how the heck are you gonna test all 10 of them? <clears throat> Very briefly, there's a few ways to do it. You could either set up something called the dynamic ad where you put those 10 creatives in, you give Facebook $10 and you say, hey, with this 10 bucks, choose where the, cre where the spend goes between all 10 creatives and optimize it towards the one that you think is gonna do best. And it'll do that, very easy way to test it, right? Um, there's other ways you could just expand the testing out. So you have 10 creatives, you only have 10 bucks a day. <clears throat> do the first two or three creatives, let them run for a few days and cycle them out. And it may take you a month to test those 10 creatives, but that's fine. Once again, the more you make, the better. And we can get into some more of that advanced stuff later down the road, but it's just important to get in a cadence I've found. So that's really the most important part that it comes to paid ads that I've seen biggest success in even in accounts that spend a ton of money where we're spending like a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars or more every month, making more content, making more ads is what separates us doing amazing, just doing okay to us really not doing well at all. So <clears throat> that's everything here for point three. Next, let's talk about tracking everything. So with tracking, 
Um, I obviously showed you inside of the ads manager, how you can set up your custom columns and start to track those KPIs, those key performance indicators. Now that's great, but Facebook, as you'll tend to find out, is horribly inaccurate. Facebook will say, especially with the deeper funnel metrics. And what I mean by that is Facebook can track things that are happening on its platform, no problem. So for example, Facebook can track if a click's happening. Facebook can track how many people have seen the ad. Facebook can track how many people have engaged with it because it's all happening on their platform. The second you send them to another page, another landing page, a website, whatever, that's where Facebook like loses its visibility. So for example, you can see right here, I was optimizing for leads here. I told Facebook, hey, I wanna get leads. Great. This probably isn't accurate. It's probably pretty close because I set up the tracking correctly. But in most cases, this tracking right here is not right. And that's why I recommend setting up a simple tracking sheet so you can actually track things for yourself. Now, I've gone back and forth about this because I don't wanna make more work for myself by making a tracking sheet and copying the metrics from Facebook that are already there. So what I like to do is make really simple KPI sheets. And there's two versions that you guys can use and I'll put them in the description below. You could do something really simple like this. You have the date, newest date is up at the top. It's a daily tracker. You can track, hey, I spent $10. I got one opt-in, I got three sales, so on and so forth, right? You'll probably need to change the math in this Excel sheet. <clears throat> and for both of these, when you see them, just hit file and make a copy to make it your own. Um, but this is a really simple one. Once again, you can kind of tweak this. If you're not getting opt-ins, just get rid of that column. If you're just tracking sales, get rid of it. If you wanna add in a column and you wanna add something like add to carts, go for it. This is your sheet, you can do what you want with it, but this is a little bit more simpler. It's a daily tracker because the workflow that I'll show you <clears throat> is I like to check in on my ads once a day, usually first thing in the morning. I'll log in, check all the ads, check all my trackers and do my, do my optimizations, right? There's that option. <clears throat> There's also an option like this where you can kind of break it out. So this is a very similar like daily tracker here. You could even have a funnel tracker. So you could look at over a week, a seven period time frame, funnel metrics, how many people saw my page, how many people saw the order form, what was the conversion rate, what was the average order value, all that good stuff. And then you can even do a monthly roll up. So you can see, okay, how many sales, how, many re how much revenue, what was the cost of the team? What was the cost for the ads? And what was my final profit or loss? So this is more of a comprehensive one. I'll put both of them in the description. I think it's a great idea to have a simple tracker for yourself, for your business or for your clients, et cetera, right? Now, um, this leads me right into point five, which is pixel setup. So like I was just mentioning, Facebook is really, really bad at tracking, right? It can't always figure out what's going on when someone leaves the platform. Um, <clears throat> Facebook's creepy but it's not good at being creepy and tracking what you're doing. So what Facebook uses is something called a pixel. It's basically a line of code <clears throat> that goes into a landing page or a website and you as the advertiser can set up events that that pixel can track. So say someone came to this Google doc and I wanted to track every single time someone clicked on ads right here for whatever reason. You can tell the pixel to do that stuff. I'll probably do a separate video on the pixel setup because that's just a whole different process. Um, there's tons of videos online on YouTube to how to set it up. It's a very easy process. It was easy a few years ago. Then it got really hard when iOS 14 came out on, um, on Apple devices. Now it's gotten a lot easier, um, but it, there's still some kinks to it to work out. But <clears throat> tracking everything on the pixel is super important to make sure you set that up. And, and one thing that's helped me out a lot is this Facebook pixel helper, meta pixel helper. So this is a extension on the Google Chrome extension store, just Google meta pixel helper, uh, Google Chrome extension at it because it helps you track the pixel and make sure that it's actually set up correctly. So I'll show you what I mean. So with this pixel installed, um, I'll show you one of my sites here real quick. You can, once you've installed it by checking one of those videos and I'll probably make one at one point, but you can track to make sure that the pixel is on here and boom, you can see it's tracking it. It can tell that a page view has popped up. So it's small stuff like that. Once again, I'll do a separate video on it. There are tons of videos and Facebook has plenty of guides as well on how to set up the pixel correctly if you're sending them to a landing page. So make sure you set that up. 
once again, I'll probably do a separate video about it. Um, but simple enough, make sure you set up your pixel because it allows Facebook to actually have eyes on the back end and see what's actually happening. So make sure you set that up. Now, next thing we're almost wrapping up here is let's talk about actually launching an ad. I'll go through it step by step and show you things to look out for and all that kind of good stuff. So let's get started. So we'll hit create and we'll choose our objective. If I wouldn't really recommend touching or worrying these, worrying about these awareness or traffic ones. In most cases, you're gonna be doing engagement, leads, or sales. So if you're trying to send people to a landing page to buy something, you're probably gonna do sales. If you're sending people to a page to opt in, even if they buy something on the next page, if this is your first time setting up an ad, you're gonna do leads. And I'll explain why later, but <clears throat> this, these are usually what you're gonna pick. In my case, I'm gonna do sales because it'll show a little bit more of the setup. At this point, you can choose to name your campaign. I don't mind doing that at this point, but what I'll usually do is I'll hit continue, do a manual sales campaign. You want full control over this kind of stuff. And I'll usually name my campaign just right here. Um, and I'll keep it very simple. Naming conventions, it can be whatever you want it to be. Just make sure that at a glance, you know exactly what you're looking at and make it simple. So what I usually like to do is I like to put in the thing that I'm promoting. So I'll put in like the product that I'm promoting and then I'll put in like the general objective of that campaign. And I usually set up like a prospecting campaign, a testing campaign and a retargeting campaign. Um, prospecting is just, hey, I'm prospecting for buyers, right? Is This is what this campaign's purpose is. It's prospecting for buyers. The testing campaign would be for testing creative, right? And I usually start with a prospecting campaign as that baseline thing. Now, if you're doing something like real estate, credit, employment, you'll choose one of these categories. Most of you guys watching this probably won't need to touch these, but if you're like a real estate agent selling a house, make sure you check this. If you are a politician running ads, make sure you check this as well, right? So do that, all this is okay. I'm not gonna get into the technical stuff with A-B testing and what this uh, Advantage campaign budget optimization is. You don't need to worry about it right now. Then you'll hit next. <clears throat> and then from here, you can once again name your ad set. What I always like to do is I like to name the ad set the targeting that I've defined. So I'll come back and name that in a minute. And in this case, where, are you, where do you wanna drive sales is what it's asking, right? In this case, I wanna send people to a website to drive a sale. Now, at this point, you should have your pixel set up, especially if you're driving people to a website. <clears throat> and what you'll do is you'll choose that pixel here. So you'll choose the pixel and then you'll choose the event purchase, right? I wanna get buyers. Then cost per result goal, don't worry about that. <clears throat> don't worry about more options. Now, a little while ago, I mentioned dynamic creative. Um, this is that option where you can basically give Facebook up to 10 creatives and it'll automatically generate combinations that are best suited to the audience that you're targeting. It's a really great option. I wouldn't recommend doing it yet. We'll do it later down the road when we start testing. I have plenty of videos on my channel again about that kind of stuff. But for now, don't worry about messing with that. Just, just leave it alone. Um, then we'll go at the budget and schedule. Choose how much you want to spend. Um, what I'd recommend for someone starting off is I wouldn't normally do less than $10 a day. Things are just going to move too slow and it's just not worth it. So if you can't spend $10 a day for at least just a month consistently, it's like 300 bucks a month, don't do this yet. <laughs> it's just not worth it in my opinion. Um, at least for these specific objectives like purchase, lead, etc. cetera, right? Um, then from here, you can set a schedule. I don't always do this, but it can be really useful if you feel like you're gonna forget this. So you can say, hey, I want my ad to launch Wednesday at 10 a.m. <clears throat> and I want it to end at the end of the month at 10 a.m., right? You can choose to do that so it'll automatically start and stop your ad for you. But if you don't want it to start or stop it, because I usually control it because I check it daily anyway, you don't have to set that end date. Um, and then you don't need to worry about any of this. Okay, now we're getting into making our audience. So at this point, you can choose the location. You can do worldwide, all of the US. You could do certain countries, locations, states. Very simple, just type in exactly where you want to target and it'll make it happen. And then we'll scroll down here and you'll see this Advantage Plus audience. This can look confusing, but all you need to do is hit audience suggestion right here. And this is where you can build out your audience. 
Don't worry about custom audiences yet. I'm gonna to touch on those in a future video. You do not need those at this moment. Um, for the age range, choose the age range of your ideal customer, like we spoke about at the beginning of the video. So let's say I wanna be 25 to 55, or we'll do 25 to 45. You can choose even target men, women, or everyone. <clears throat> and then at this point, you can do detailed targeting. Now, a lot of people get really tied up here. Um, I'd recommend for your first ad to not do more than five detailed interests at first. It may be tough, but try not to do more than five. So what I'd recommend doing is if you, once again, if you made a list of like your competitors, interests, book, uh, books that your ideal customers could be reading, all that stuff, that comes in really great um, use right here. So let's start off with Gary V, Gary Vay Vaynerchuk. Let's pop him in. Great. And this makes your life really easy. If you pick one that you can find, and sometimes there's not people on here, like there used to be Grant Cardone on here, and last I checked, he's not available anymore. So keep kind of searching until you find what you want. Um, and if you're having trouble, you can hit browse and browse through these different demographics, interests, or behaviors if you'd like. But what I've always found to work best is find one interest that you're good with, and then hit the suggestions button right here. A ton more are gonna pop up. So like Robert Kiyosaki, that's great entrepreneurship, awesome, <clears throat> and advertising, great. Okay, that's four, I'm good with that, right? You can do the same thing for literally anything. So say you wanted to target people that are interested in Walmart or Dunkin' Donuts, is that available? Yeah, <clears throat> here we go. Starbucks, Krispy Kreme, mm, Wendy's, and Chick-fil-A. Here you go. <clears throat> now, before you move on, because some of you may not have this broad of an audience, make sure you check up here in the top right this audience definition, and it shows the estimated audience size. Um, make sure that you're in the green here. If you're in the red, it's too specific. I've hardly ever seen it go in the broad, um, but just make sure that your audience size is at least one to three million, um, like at least between those ranges. You don't want it less than a million, especially when you're starting. Obviously, if it's over 3 million, that's totally fine. It's not too broad. Um, and then this estimated daily results section, that, uh, take the whole thing with a grain of salt, especially the conversions. The reach is a, is a lot more accurate. You're probably gonna reach about these amount of people per day based on your budget, right? Take the conversions, take this stuff with a grain of salt. It's, it's especially the conversions, it's never accurate. I've hardly ever seen this thing be accurate. Um, so there's that. After that point, you can you can do some cool things like clicking define further. So you could say, okay, I want to target all of these people, but I also want to make sure that they're interested in Gary V. So you could do that, and then boom, look at how that slimmed down our audience. So it's people that are interested in all these restaurants, but they also have to be interested in Gary V. It dropped our audience size from like I think 28 million to like 1 million, and this is actually a really good audience size. It was actually really good, right? You could actually keep defining it if you really really wanted to. So that's everything on the audience side. Finally, before we leave this section is the placements. So right here, you can hit edit. I'd recommend if this is your first time running an ad, leave it as automatic, just leave it alone. But if you'd like to in the future, you can hit manual placements and you can choose to uncheck things like this. Say you only wanna target people on Facebook and you only wanna target people on Facebook stories, you can do that, right? But once again, I'd really recommend to just keep it as broad, keep it as automatic, that's the best thing you can do. Then from here, this is where before we leave this, I'd like to kind of put in the audience targeting. So you could say um, restaurants plus Gary V. And then you can put in the age range, what do we do, 25 to 45? And then you can say auto placements. This is what I like to do because then at a glance, you can tell exactly who you're targeting. So restaurants plus Gary V, 25 to 45, auto placements, you know what's going on, right? <clears throat> now the last step, you hit next. And then from here, this is where you actually make the ad. So you can once again, put in the name. I would just give a description of the ad that you're running. So you could just say like, add one meme meme image, that's it, right? Add one would be the copy, meme image would just be describing what you're putting up there, right? 
Don't worry about partnership ad. <clears throat> for identity, this is where you're gonna put in like what page you're promoting this as. So you'll choose your page here. Create ad is fine. Manual upload is okay. Single image or video is what I'd recommend starting with. And then at this point, you can actually add in the ad creative. So you can hit add media, <clears throat> add image, and then, or your video. And then at this point, you can upload whatever you wanna upload. We'll do this one. Great picture. And at this point, it's also gonna ask you, hey, do you wanna optimize your ad? So Facebook will actually like put music on or they'll put a filter on the image or they'll make visual touch-ups to it, right? There's all this different stuff they could do. I'd recommend actually leaving this off for your first time um, just because it's adding in another variable that you're not kind of throwing in there. So keep it off for now and then hit done. It'll pop that in. <clears throat> then from there, you're gonna add in the primary text. You say, hey, click here and buy my thing. And then your headline, you'd say, click here now, cool stuff, right? Then you could add a description in. I don't recommend doing it just because it doesn't show up on many placements like on feeds, description's not here, Instagram feed, it's not here. It's hardly ever gonna pop up, so I wouldn't recommend adding it and wasting your time with it. Um, then you can choose the call to action button. So where it says learn more, you can actually click this right here and you can choose which button to, to use. I'll tell you now, we've tested a lot of these different buttons and learn more always ends up out like on top. Sometimes, um, like order now, shop now sign up are pretty good listen now could be good or get offer download is also really great the rest of them aren't too good obviously it depends on your scenario your niche the offer you're promoting because sometimes like get show times okay that's going to be great if you're doing something like that but in most cases we've seen that learn more is the best gets the highest conversion it's it's because it's lease um it's not really like getting them to commit to something. It's just like learn more. It's not like sign up now. It's like, okay, shoot, I don't want to sign up. Like, I just want to check this out. That's why learn more tends to be really, really good. <clears throat> then from here, you can drop your website URL. Don't worry really about any of this stuff. And that's essentially it. When you're happy with everything, you can go ahead and hit publish. Your ad will go through a review process and it'll be in good shape. That's basically everything really simple way to launch your ad you can follow this video along when you're setting them up in the future um, but that's number six we actually just launched an ad step by step super easy now the last few things that i want to kind of go over uh, 0.7 8 and 9 i'll cover here is feed first things first is feedback loops what to do with this cheat sheet and then scaling now um, i'm going to put this in the description below this is a really really great resource that i put together for you guys and it's actually going to be in here too. There's two versions of this doc. So I'll put this one in here because it'll include both. Um, so this is actually a full guide and a full cheat sheet um, for kind of giving an overview of everything. Those metrics that I mentioned, like clicks, link clicks, those KPIs, this document is gonna tell you what those actually mean, um, like what they are and what they mean is what this is. So like a link click is the number of times someone clicked on your button or ad. That's what it is. Now, what it means is it gives you a better picture of how well your ad's doing, usually related to copy or headline, right? So on and so forth. <clears throat> and there's even a little daily workflow here. Kind of goes through like what you should do every day, how you should look at it, and all that good stuff. I also went ahead and attached this simple Facebook ads tracker here as well, kind of like the ones that we spoke about. Um, and then I talk about UTM tracking. It's not really necessary, but it is there if you want to check it out. I wouldn't really recommend worrying about that. Um, and then you'll see at the top of each of these, there's this deep dive on everything. You'll click that and that'll take you to this Google sheet. Now this is a really cool resource. I'm really proud of it. Um, it basically takes everything to a, a whole nother level and it improves upon it. So it takes those KPIs because at the end of the day, when you're running ads, if something isn't working um, or something is working, the KPIs are gonna almost be like your hints and your clues as to what thing isn't working or what thing is doing the job and what can I do to actually change it? So <clears throat> let's say you've ran an ad, you spent 50 bucks and you've gotten no sales. You're like, what the heck? I haven't gotten any sales. This sucks. This doesn't work, right? Well, not really. <laughs> Go to this funnel diagnostic sheet 
and it'll show you why the thing isn't working and what you need to do to fix it. So for example, you're gonna go through all of these metrics and it's actually gonna line up with these ones. The, the, K, the key performance indicators is KPIs that I showed you um, and that you set up your ads manager with. Those are the KPIs you're gonna look at. So let's say you're going through, you're like, cool, my cost per link click is less than $3. My click-through rate isn't at 2%. Oh shoot, my click-through rate is not at 2% or higher. It's at 0.5%. You're like, wow, this isn't good. What the heck does this mean? You can say, okay, so this just means the number of times someone saw your ad and clicked. This tells you how well your ad creative is doing, right? So that's what it means at a third grader level, that this is what it affects. How can you influence it? Okay, so you're like, great, my creative sucks. What do I do? There's actually more trainings in here that'll take you deeper on how to improve that specific thing. So let's say it's creative. Boom, you've got three videos right here to kind of guide you through on how to do that, right? Now, make sure you go through all the metrics and you can kind of note them down as you're going through. So say you're going through your ad, you're like, okay, cost per link click is good, creative's bad. Okay, cool, keep going. CPMs are good, link click through rate is good, unique outbound CTR is really bad, right? So then at that point, you can say, okay, so there's two reasons why this could be not working, my creative or my ad itself. The ad's not resonating with people and my creative isn't getting enough clicks. So then you've got these three videos here and which ones? These two videos here to kind of go over and see how you can improve these things. And I add new videos to this doc once every few weeks. So you'll see this being updated. The green is the general ad KPIs. If you're running like a call funnel to get booked calls, that's orange. And then if you're selling like a low ticket offer, <clears throat> um, those metrics are here too. So that's everything here on this cheat sheet. This is gonna give you a really great feedback loop and as long as you follow this kind of daily workflow, this funnel diagnostic cheat sheet is a lifesaver. I wish I had it when I started. It's a great resource. You can check it out below. You can also message me on Instagram um, or join our free community in the description to get even more of these resources because the main one I'm providing is this doc below and this. This doc includes that tracker. But once again, if you want more resources, you can join our community, reach out to me on email or Instagram. Um, all that stuff's in the description if you want to reach out to me and, and you can get those resources. And that's essentially everything. Um, as far as that, the, the cheat sheet's going to show you how to scale um, as well. So it's super simple. But that's really like your crash course to launching your first ad and understanding what this means. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I think the most important thing is just making sure that you're testing a lot of stuff and you got to pay to play. You got to spend a little bit of money. It's totally normal that if you spend depending on how much your offer is, you're gonna need to spend a couple hundred bucks to kind of figure the thing out, right? Because you need to test some copy, you need to test some creative. And if it's your first time ever running ads, you can crush it and you can get great success with it. But leverage organic to fuel your paid ad growth so you don't have to spend as much money at the beginning when it hurts. Now, eventually, the person who wins in business is the person who can afford to spend the most money to acquire a customer. If you can only spend $500 to acquire a customer, but I can spend 50 grand because I just can, I would beat you every single time. I'll just keep spending money and I'll just keep acquiring customers. But the way you beat that, because some people will just be lazy and they're okay spending that much money to acquire a customer, but you don't have to be. This is where the testing comes into huge play, right? Check out the videos in the cheat sheet. Um, they link to more videos on my channel and they work really, really well. They're very simple, tactical, frameworks actually testing your ad creative and your copy because the creative is probably like the 90 percent copy and headlines do help especially at higher spends but i'm talking about spending less than a grand a day i'm talking about spending less than a hundred dollars a day here this is really the foundation i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have any questions please put them in the comment section um, or join the free community like i said all those details are in the description grab this resource in the description as well if I need to make a part two and a follow-up to this because I see a lot of questions or I see a lot of stuff coming up, I probably will. Um, this is the first video of 2024, so I'm really excited to be posting it. I'm really excited to see where we grow this channel in 2024 and my business in 2024, and you guys are along for that ride. So if you need anything else, please let me know. You know how to reach me. Go out there, kick ass on Facebook ads, and I'll see you in the next video.